we'll talk about a very special version of our DSCR product, which allows for small mixed use properties. So two to eight unit mixed use. Obviously you can't have a one unit mixed use. It'd have to be two units to be a mixed use that are mostly residential. Typically these programs are for over 50% of it being residential, but does have a component of some type of commercial use, typically some office retail, very light usage. Obviously we're not talking about an industrial, you know, warehouse or plant with an apartment above it. These are what you would consider mostly residential and therefore we can then classify them into the same category as our standard DSCR residential loan products. So these are what would normally be considered a commercial property because anything that has any commercial component, even if it was less than 50%, is still a commercial property. It's not a residential one to four unit. So these are outside of the normal scope. However, we have programs that have brought them back into the fold as a standard DSCR program, like we just presented. However, only a few programs allow us to use this property type and obviously have their own pricing and terms within that. So Jose, if you're ready with your examples, let's have you go ahead and pull those up. Good morning, everybody. Great to be with you this morning for Daily Rates Live with the Mortgage Calculator. Um, our two to eight unit mixed use product is a very unique DSCR option. Uh, it is a basically a hybrid of a commercial program for this type of uh, a property. This is a small, uh, a small residential multifamily. But the, the specialness of the program, how we're doing it here, is that contrary to commercial options, we are not really going to be honing in so much on the zip code and the MSA, but rather it is going to be reviewed just like every other DSCR residential property one to four unit is. Going to look at the appraisal, credit, all those other factors. The only special requirement for this product is that at least 50% of the space has to be residential in nature. And the other 50% could be commercial. However, we're not really looking for things like automotive or manufacturing, for example, looking for more clean type businesses such as professional office or retail. To and when you it. say space, we mean units, right? So yes. two units means one residential, one commercial. Correct. Three units would have to be two residential one commercial to be greater than 50, right? So it's the math Correct. is going to be based on units. So just Correct. wanted to clarify there. Yes. So uh, to end, um, to you know, get a little bit more into the nitty gritty, the residential, it has to be a two-story structure for this particular option that we're talking about, at least a two-story structure because the residential and the commercial component cannot all be on the first floor. They're looking at residential to be at least on the second floor and the commercial to be on the first floor. <clears throat> so let's get into our purchase options here. You're going to find that the rates that we're going to offer with this hybrid type product is probably like 2% lower than what you would find for a, for the same op for the same type property. If you were to go full commercial. And then on top of that, you're going to have to be dealing with the zip code and the MSA situation. Whereas the only thing we really got to worry about here is that the property not be designated rural per the appraisal. So in our first option here, we're looking at a 760 plus credit score at 760 or above. There are no loan level price adjustments, 75% LTV is the maximum for this product. Minimum DSCR for this product is 1.1, and it does require a five-year prepayment penalty. They do not allow any prepayment uh, less in duration than five years. 
So there are uh, multiple rate options here. What I basically did is take the one more or less in the middle. So here in this example, we're looking at a $450,000 loan on a $600,000 purchase. So the rate we're looking at here is 9.625, and that's roughly 1.75 points. Now for each, excuse me, for each 0.125% in rate adjustment, either down or up, it is approximately 0.375 points in cost. So you can do the math if you want to play around a little bit with the rate, up or down. But like I mentioned, I chose the one that was pretty much right in the middle of the table at 9.625. Now, keep in mind something very important also. This is a similar product as the 5 to 8 unit small multifamily DSER product, except this one, since it is mixed use, does have a loan level price adjustment of over two points. So were this our five to eight unit, you could see that the rate 9.625 would be pretty much par for, for this DSER. But again, what we're doing here is the two to eight mixed use, which is a little bit higher risk type property due to the commercial component, hence a little bit higher cost on the rates. So now 740 to 759 credit score, it does increase a little bit in the cost, whereas this one had roughly 1.75. This one is about two and a quarter, more or less, for the rate, 9.625. The important thing is you're still getting 75% LTV at a 740 to a 759. Now we have 720 to 739, which is 720 is the lowest credit score at which you can still reach 75% LTV. So I did keep the rate on my examples here, all the same rate, just so that you could compare the effect of the FICO score on the cost of the rate, because it's really all about the cost of the rate not necessarily the rate. All depends how, how you want to look at it. We have the same rate. It's just going to cost a little bit more because at the lower credit score, it is higher risk, hence a little bit higher cost. So we are able to get 9.625, but whereas over here was costing us 10.125, over here is costing us 12.938. So now we have our um, purchase quote, 700 to 719 credit score. Now, below a 720, the LTV does drop to 70%. So that is the big impact here. It is not possible to reach 75% below a 720 with this option that we have, which is our lowest interest rate option here. Uh, we do have some other options, but they're like 2% higher rate. So here we're looking at nine. Now, remember, this is at a 70% now, not 75s, and I kept the rate the same. So here the cost does drop a little bit to 10,688, but that is because now we are at a 70% LTV instead of a 75%, a little bit lower risk due to the lower LTV. And now we have a 6 80 to 699 credit score. Again, our LTV drops now to 65% LTV. It is the maximum LTV that is possible for a 680 to a 699 credit score. We kept the rate the same, 9.625, but now you see the cost does drop to $7,800. So if you wanted to keep the cost the same, as let's say the first example, which which was 8438, you would probably yeah, more or less would be the same. I don't think you would be able to drop to 9.5, and it would you can, but 0.375 of 390 would be roughly $1,300. So you'd be a little bit higher than the cost at the maximum LTV 
at a 760 or above, but still here, good rate for a 680, you can go 9.625 at a 65% LTV. I can guarantee you this is a lower rate at this credit score than any of the other options that you would have out there for this mixed use product with much less complications on the approval. Oh, one other thing I didn't make note on this product, it does allow first time investors, as long as they have a primary housing expense for the last 12 months. So that's a little frosting on the cake there. And our last example, which is our lowest credit score that is possible on this program, on this option, excuse me, 660 to 679. So we are able to go all the way down to a 660 credit score at a 65% LTV for this mixed use product, which is pretty unbelievable. Now, obviously, rate is a little higher, 10.375. However, I will tell you the following. This rate at 10.375 at a 660 is lower than most of the other options have at a 740. So uh, keep that in mind. So 10.375, uh, the cost is just a little bit over two points. And again, 660 to 679 credit score at a 65% LTV. All right, great. I don't see any questions, but I just really want to reiterate because I know there's some people probably that are new on here and probably some people who are new to commercial. Just one of the amazing things about these programs is that they can't discriminate against where this this property is. And for those of you, uh, you know, familiar with the commercial world, you know that that's a huge issue, especially a lot of these properties that DSCR well they're going to be in areas where a commercial lender probably wouldn't touch, right, Jose? These areas where the market's not going to be big enough, there's not going to be, you know, enough stuff there to pass the snuff of the commercial lender. Totally right? true. I mean, that is probably, besides the amazing rates, right, that is probably the, the most positive feature of this DSCR option is that it is uh, analyzing these properties as if they were one to four unit DSCR, as far as not looking at the zip code and all the other factors that the commercial lenders tend to look at when sizing up a deal. Because when you go over four units, you're commercial, right? And that's, you're gonna have to deal with all of that stuff typically, but that's why these programs are so amazing. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we can go ahead and wrap it up. Remember, we do this show 11 a.m. Eastern every single weekday where we go through the live rates and then do a deep dive into a different topic. 